Hi. So welcome to the Designate Why and How. So we, we intend to tell you a bit about Designate, why it was created, and sorry, there we go. Uh, and how you can use it. So my name is Graham Hayes. I'm the uh, PTL for Designate. I've been PTL for two cycles, and I'm staying on for the Okada cycle as well. Uh, on my left, we have Tim Simmons. He's a Designate Core. Uh, and we have Kyle McGuinness, who is also a Designate Core, and the, pr pr my predecessor is PTL. So DNS, it's not that hard, right? Um, it, it's only the two biggest problems, the, uh, the two hardest problems in computer science. Um, and as we've seen last week, uh, when it fails, it tends to fail really badly, and things go really, really wrong. So part of that is, so part of what we want to designate to do is to help manage DNS and help you run your own DNS potentially, or integrate with multiple third-party providers. So we always have to have an architecture slide. Uh, this is the gist of what we have for Designate. We have an API service, obviously. We have a central, which is equivalent to a conductor. So it's what talks to the database and does all the access. And then we have uh, workers, which just scale out horizontally depending on your workload. And for periodic tasks, we have a, a producer which just kicks off periodic tasks and sends them to the workers. Uh, all of it is with pluggable backends, so we support multiple DNS servers. Uh, by 9 PairDNS, NSD, uh, Akamai, Dynect, um, and uh, Microsoft DNS, there's the ones at the top of my head. And this is the back end section the, the, the here. So that's just pluggable, and that plugs into the workers for controlling uh, the DNS information on the servers. We run a mini DNS service, which all it does is send zone transfer information to the, to the customer facing DNS servers. Uh, it's not supposed to be hit by your customers. Uh, it's a small Python DNS service. It, it, it's designed for one thing and one thing only. So for the public cloud use case, uh, Tim Simmons from Rackspace is going to talk about it. Hello. So uh, assuming you've already stood up your public cloud, which is totally fine, everybody's already done that, uh, I'm going to tell you why you might need uh, DNS as a service for it and why you should probably use Designate. So. First of all, your customers, uh, they're going to want DNS names for all of their cloud resources. Um, you know, floating IPs, no instances, trobes, swift buckets, all that stuff. You're going to want, um, they're going to want to have an actual DNS name. They're not going to want to be addressing it by an IP address or something like that. Um, this is hopefully obvious. Uh, customers want to use uh, clicky clicky in the UI. They want to have a REST API, CLIs, um, orchestration, all that stuff. Uh, these are all things that Designate has, so you know they want to be able to actually touch and feel in very many ways. Um, they're going to want to spin up, spin down rapidly. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you're going to need these APIs, CLIs, et cetera, for. Um, and for customers, obviously, DNS is really important for their business, right? Um, you don't you don't want to mess up. Uh, as we've all seen, you don't want to mess up where your DNS points and uh, have it go down or anything like that. And being able to have you know, labs.company.com or whatever for all of your testing um, and being able to separate that clearly from the actual business uh, is really important. And a lot of customers, well, not a lot, but some customers will also integrate DNS tightly into their business, you know, giving every customer, every one of their customers a subdomain or something like that. Um, and you know, if you're you, the operator of this OpenStack cloud, uh, you want it for all the same reasons, right? Like, good luck, have fun if you're trying to stand up a, an OpenStack cloud without being able to rapidly change DNS records and address things by name. Um, Designate is a pretty simple, stable uh, perform and control plane uh, for managing DNS, which is super important. Um, there's pretty good administrative tools for managing what's allowed to be created by who, uh, you can get pretty granular with you know, what you're going to allow people to do and um, the limits on what people can actually do and how many things they're allowed to create, et cetera, stuff like that. Um, when you're running a public cloud, you're going to have to extend something somewhere. You're going to have something that's special that not everybody needs. So Designate is um, you know, oversimplification, but it's plugins all the way down, right? So if you need to add new API endpoints, new administrative API functionality, new business logic, um, 
different DNS server drivers, custom drivers, uh, all that stuff you can do. Um, so it's really good if you're, you've got your own cloud and you have something, something weird off on the side that you've got to do. Um, configuration is very flexible. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit more as I get into what a public cloud might look like, but you can do, uh, if you can dream it, you can do it, right? So if you, you might have some really weird DNS configuration. Uh, everybody's weird, right? Like nobody's DNS configuration, how they deploy DNS servers is the same. Um, and obviously, you don't want to manage DNS with a ticket, right? Like I think everybody's uh, sent a support ticket to somebody before asking if you can change the IP for this thing to this, and then they fat finger it, and yeah, it's, it's a hassle, it's terrible. So let me tell you about one of the biggest features about Designate is, is server pools. So pools are logically separate corpuses of DNS data that are completely separate sets of servers. So you might have a pool, uh, pool A and pool B that serve different purposes. I guess a, an example might be if you've ever used uh, Dyn or AWS or Route 53, uh, that when you create a zone, you'll have some level or some number of DNS uh, name server records that you get back, like you know NS123, oh, NS685, CoUK, whatever. Uh, these are all different pools of servers that your zone might be created in, and you should have many of them so that you can uh, distribute the, your, your load of zones across them, and hopefully when one of them has a problem, not all your customers have a problem. Um, Designate makes this really easy to configure, so you can, uh, you, know, you can have as many pools as you want or as little pools as you want. Um, scheduling zones across pools is relatively simple. There's an operator configurable scheduler that lets you write your own filters, so whatever logic you want to apply when you're trying to decide where to distribute zones among DNS servers, you can do that. Um, a, a pool is usually made up of some number of DNS servers, maybe two, four, six, eight, 100, whatever. Um, and they'll have their own NS records generally. So when you create a zone in a pool, you'll get the NS records back for just that pool. Um, this is good for if you're trying to have maybe disparate feature sets across you know, different DNS uh, pools or something like that. You might have some pools with you know, certain features here or you know, running different software here. So this is kind of an example of how you might have a, a public cloud setup. You know, you've got three regions you know, designate a uh, control plane running active and then in one region and running in disaster recovery or passive in another region. And then in this example, we're gonna have four pools, so A, B, C, and D. So A and B are just kind of your simple everyday pools. They're running in one region. Uh, this would be super cheap, whatever. Pool C is running in three, three regions, so a little bit more redundancy, maybe a few more features. And then uh, pool D is gonna be a, a DNS vendor. So. Uh, if you think of, you know, kind of service levels here, pool A and B are kind of your standard, maybe free pools. They have all the basic DNS features that you would expect. I make a query, I resolve, everybody's happy. Um, you might combine uh, Bind9 and PowerDNS are kind of our most popular drivers, so that when Bind has a CVE, you know, not all of your fleet is affected. Um, your customer zones would probably be evenly distributed across these two pools for in your kind of standard rate. Um, you know, maybe you offer this as a, a free option for mom and pop running their WordPress site. So for the next level, you might have um, maybe a gold type pool. So I don't know, maybe you're running NSD or not or something cool. Um, although maybe you don't want your DNS to be super cool. I don't know. Um, so you'll run it in more regions, have different NS records. You know, maybe you offer some advanced features like secondary DNS, which is the thing Designate does. More regions, you know, charge them, charge them a, a dime or whatever. Um, this is kind of the standard. This is how anyone who actually runs a, a DNS service themselves, they're going to run it in all of their regions that they possibly can. Um, and then maybe you have Pool D. So Pool D is super platinum, intensive, enterprise, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can, this is all operated by one designated control plane, but you're gonna be reselling a vendor. So maybe Dyn or Akamai that allows you to, um, designate has drivers to push out zones to those uh, kind of worldwide infrastructures, tons of pops and stuff like that. You have super cool features, you know, Akamai has everything in the world. Dyn has pretty cool stuff, traffic management, um, 
generally they do a pretty good job of mitigating DDoS attacks uh, and, you know, better, a lot better than you're going to do it, I promise you. Um, so that would be kind of the most, you know, high service level and, you know, what you would sell to uh, your biggest, uh, scariest customers. So if everybody wants to take out their phone and take a picture of this, then we can all be good. Okay. Um, so it, I know I've made this sound super easy, um, but managing managing anything at a, at a, as a public cloud is going to be hard, and especially DNS. Um, we've kind of seen that in the past week. So, you know, designate with designate we're trying to you know make DNS great again, and uh, so that it's not a disaster. Believe me. Um, so you might, <laughs> I'm sorry, you might want, uh, these are some, some, a few things that you might actually want to consider when, um, you know, you're trying to run DNS in your own cloud is that you're going to have to mitigate some sort of DDoS at some point. You know, it'll probably just be a customer with a runaway script or whatever. Um, but some, something is going to come up that's a lot and that's, that you're going to have to handle. Um, you might want to rate limit API requests so that customers don't go nuts. So you're going to monitor all the things. Um, at some point, you're going to have to write something custom. You know, every every cloud that has ever clouded has um, had something somewhere that is weird or out of band. Um, luckily, Designate's going to let you do that. Um, and you know, customers are just awful. They're they're going to do bad things, and you know, they're going to they're going to annoy you and whatever. Um, so it's just something to consider <laughs> when you're trying to run a public cloud. Um, I think Kyle is going to talk about private cloud. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Hi. Right. So private cloud. We're going to talk through a use case, one particular use case for a private cloud where you might have a sort of medium to large enterprise. They either have their cloud deployed or not. And they're trying to move all of their dev test QE, maybe even their production workloads, into this cloud. They're sick of managing servers like cattle, sick of managing servers like pets, and want to manage them like cattle. So we've got some demands that are kind of unique to uh, a private cloud or an enterprise cloud. So we have existing corporate infrastructure. It is old. It has been there a long time. And you are never going to get it to change. Typically, these are things like Microsoft Active Directory DNS, Bind, or IPAM solutions like Infobox. So as I said, there's no such thing as Greenfield. Everything's always, all of the DNS and IPAM systems are in place. We can change them, and we cannot expect customers to replace them. They're almost always considered vital. So you know, people don't want to touch that existing system. They're really afraid to allow something like designator of the cloud to start messing with their corporate DNS infrastructure. So we need to start slow and build up confidence as we go there. So what do we do? Oh, one more slide there. Uh, differing QoS and change control. So some services internally you don't really care about. Your dev test QA labs, nobody cares if they go down. That's, that's OK. Pre-production, we, we kind of care. Production, you know, we, we should care. Um, that one needs to kind of stay up. We also have change controls, so production stuff, nobody should be allowed to get in there besides a small set of people. Dev test QE, do whatever you want. So one of the other unique factors is the small number of top-level zones. So most corporates will have company.com, company.net, maybe one or two internal domains they use, like hpecorp.net that we use. Typically within these, it's highly unstructured. You have a mix of sometimes they'll delegate a, a BU will have a subzone. Sometimes a site will have a subzone. Sometimes they just won't create subzones, and it'll just be a mess of records. And it's very difficult to try and get some structure in on this. And there's not a huge amount you can do without a little bit of refactoring there. But hopefully, we can make this a little bit easier. So how do we do it? We start by replacing everything. We'll replace, kidding. <laughs> There's absolutely no way we're going to do that in a private cloud, in a private cloud or enterprise environment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me. Get some water. Ugh. Okay. So a private cloud environment, we're going to start with a couple of phases. You're going to start with your phase zero. That's deploy OpenStack and get the designate control plane running. We're then going to move on to phase one, two, three, and maybe some future stuff. I'll talk these through. 
So phase one, um, you've already got your cloud, you've got the designated control plane up, and you don't want to touch your existing infrastructure. You're going to stand up, bind, or power DNS, or something small and easy over at the side. You're then going to take some subzones like labs.mycompany.com and delegate them over. From there, your customers or your cloud users can start creating myproject.labs.company.com. This allows you to build up trust, so you're able to slowly start seeing you know, non-critical workloads actually using it. You haven't had to touch your existing infrastructure, and your users are starting to get used to it. As you do this, you're going to want to do things like customize the designate policy. So you would want to ensure that all zones are actually under labs.mycompany.com. You don't want people creating something else. It's, it's not going to work, so you want to make sure it's a good user experience. So we've kind of got these first three pieces here done. Once you've built up some confidence, you can move forward with the integration. So as Tim was talking about, we have this idea of pools. So you'll create a second pool. The second pool will be uh, tied into your Active Directory or your info box or whatever it is you're running. You'll put tight ACLs on that so that only a few people can use it to start. And then you'll start building up a little bit of trust by moving some customers into that. So maybe you'll move some pre-production workloads while leaving the labs, uh, labs on bind and parity in us. The process to actually move stuff that might have been in your existing uh, DNS infrastructure, we need a little bit of a better story for this, but right now it's exported from your old, imported to the new. That works when you're going from, let's say, the AD over to binder power DNS. But if you're wanting to move from old management system that pushed into AD to new management system designate that pushes into AD, you're going to have a little bit of an issue there where you're exporting from one side and importing in, and it's going to overwrite what's on the far side. So it's not going to be a zero downtime, but we're going to do this with pre-production workloads. So it should be reasonably OK to do. So we've now got two pools, Bind and Power DNS, Microsoft AD or Infobox, or whatever else you're running. At this point, you might want to start shutting down Bind and Power DNS. Maybe you're, you're sick of running two different DNS systems. So we're going to go ahead and deprecate the designate owned Bind and Power DNS. So to do that, the very first step we'll do is we'll just go ahead and customize policy again. And we'll say nobody's allowed to create a zone on this pool. So existing stuff is there. You can still work with it, but nothing new can go. You're going to start asking users to migrate over to the Microsoft AD pool or whatever else you've got on the side. <coughs> As you're doing this, you're going to start probably wanting to move some of the more important zones, production zones. As I said, we don't have a great story there for that right now. But yes, you can do it if you're willing to go into the database and work out a, a, a SQL to actually dump, your, dump everything in there and go over, to your exist, go over to your existing side and update the name servers. It sucks. It's something we have to work towards fixing. So you've now got only one pool left, Microsoft AD and Infobox. At this point, you can get rid of the support ticket-based DNS. It's gone. Um, everyone should be able to log into your horizon or whatever your UI is and start making changes. Whatever the policy is, they'll be allowed to do. If they're allowed to create subzones, they'll be allowed to do that. If they're allowed to create records in a, a big shared zone, they'll be allowed to do that. You can then go on further, and let's say you've got some really important production things like www.mycompany.com, public-facing stuff. You might want to start bringing that in as well. So this is where you might turn around and have Akamai or Dynect as a pool, and those would handle your public non-private stuff, but you want to try and keep them all managed together, so you can do that here. You can also, if there's a public cloud out there that's offering this, and I, I don't think one is yet, but uh, you can also tie in a designate to designate driver. Same way we can push to Akamai, we can push to, to another designate instance. Um, and at that point, you've got Microsoft AD, Infobox, and potentially an Akamai or Dynect pool sitting at the side for the highest value domains. So kind of short, sorry about that, but uh, private cloud use cases are different. They're, they typically involve tying in with existing systems. They typically involve a whole level of tiers of service, and it can be quite difficult to do it all in one go. So the takeaway there is just start small. 
you know, you're not going to move your entire company into Nova at a flick of a switch. Why would you do the same for Designate? So at this point, I'll hand over to Graham. He's going to talk a little bit about sort of a university style use case. Yeah, hi. So in a previous job, I dealt a lot with higher education and saw a lot of how the internal university and college IT systems worked. Um, and the gist of it is a lot of them have really weird setups. Uh, they've sort of grown organically with random vendors brought in every couple of years to update things. And there's always that weird student's final year project that's running some critical system that we don't know about and nobody knows how to fix. But as, we, as the cloud has started getting bigger, more and more universities are moving towards it. <coughs> Students are demanding it. They need to have wor uh, workloads for classes and to learn the new way of developing and learning about treating servers like cattle. Um, and as part, as part of that, DNS is a major, major thing for allowing them to have a myname.student.institute.edu uh, access to their servers and to show it off. So there's, it can be very fragmented. There's multiple different groups of users. So you have the standard IT IS systems. You have administrative systems, things like the uh, student record systems, timetables, all the, uh, these sort of things. Uh, the content management system that runs pretty much everything inside universities these days. Um, you have uh, academic staff because they always want their own web page. They don't believe in uploading their stuff to a central place that has to be on their own web page. And more and more, we, need, we have students who have a need from DNS. So <coughs> what Designate provides is different ways for these different users to push records into a single place. So we have automatic records. If you use the, uh, we have an integration with Neutron. So when you create flowing IPs, we can automatically assign uh, DNS records uh, with that floating IP address and the reverse DNS for it. You have users, obviously, through we have Horizon plugins, and our API is actually it's relatively simple. So if people want to create their own custom control panel, it can be done. And then we have also automation through our API and the very few other libraries. And we also support the, the computer science department in every university I've ever been to always has a weird setup that they know what they're doing and they demand that they want it to run their way. And we actually support bringing in that information as well. So how do we do it? So for the, as I said, for the automatic, we have uh, records, we have the Nova neutral integration. We also have a designate sync component, which listens to the event stream out of all of the, all the different projects across OpenStack. Um, so it's a, again, it's plugin based like everything else in designate. So you can write your own plugin to listen to the event stream and create and delete records as you see fit. So the, the, we was, before we had the Nova and Neutron integration, this is how we did automatic creation of records for uh, VMs. We listen to the Nova and Neutron event queue and see, okay, a server's been created, what's its IP address and create the name. Uh, but it also allows you to do things, you can listen to the Trove queue, uh, Sahara or any of the other myriad of projects out there. You can listen to their events and do, do a task based on that information. Uh, we have Horizon panels. We have a CLI with the, the designated client that's currently tied in with the OpenStack client uh, as a plug-in to OpenStack client, so you can do OpenStack zone create information. Uh, Shade, which is a sort of, it's a client library for a lot of OpenStack. It, it, it makes the inter interaction a lot simpler. Uh, we all, there's designated support in there. And as part of that, there's Ansible to support as well for creating records, if you have Ansible as part of your workflow. Um, we also we have the feature for the weird DNS setup is we support secondary zones. So if you have your own DNS server at the side, uh, we can just zone transfer the information off of that DNS server, pull it into the designate database, and push it out to the designate servers. So this allows, if people have their own custom provisioning systems that are pushing to a uh, power DNS or bind or whatever, we can pull the DNS records information straight off them and put them in our database. Uh, they won't be able to be, you can't edit them obviously. Uh, in designate, the CLI won't, will stop you from doing any updates, but as, as soon as a new information is pushed to the server, we'll again do a zone transfer and push the new records. 
So for students, as we said, we have, we're, our policy is, the policy engine is pretty concise. So we can say that students don't get to create zones. They are given a pre-created zone of their ID, their student number, or their Unix ID, uh, and they can create as many records as what they want in there. Uh, administrative systems, you can tie in to the, the API. You can tie, if you're using Ansible for administrative systems, it's fine. For the ITIS systems, you've obviously migrated all of your stuff to the cloud first, uh, and you're dog feeding your own product. So you can just use the Nova Neutron integration, uh, in theory. And academic staff, we can give them permission to create whatever zones they want under the staff.university.edu. Um, and all of this, all of this gives us a decent use case for all the different cohorts we have in a university level. And again, it's a single managed control space, so it's very easy for the IT administrators to look at all of the DNS records. And because we have integration with, with Searchlight, if you have Searchlight in your cloud, searching for an IP address will give you the flooding IP address, the, the Nova server, and the DNS records associated with it. Uh, so it gives a great single pane of glass for managing your infrastructure. So with that, do we have any questions? Um, do you know of anybody integrating it with uh, LBAS? Uh, the question was, do we know of anyone integrating it with LBAS? Uh, not yet. There is an open ticket against uh, Neutron LBAS to, literally when Neutron LBAS creates the VIT port, all they have to do is set an attribute on the port and it'll work with the Nova Neutron integration. Um, I plan on chasing down a few of them this week. Uh, for, actually, for what you can do for the time being, the, new, the LBAS v2 API allows you to pass in a port to it. So if you pre-create the port and put the, set the DNS name attribute on it, that'll do the integration. What's the DNS record type you guys support? Uh, yeah. Is my mic on? No. Uh, there's a, a, a pretty, is there any particular record you, you're interested in? SRB. We support. Yes, we support all those. Do you support NS so you can delegate to an external? Yep, yes. if somebody wants, yeah. Uh, we, yeah, we support all those. Uh, adding a record is a very simple operation to do for us. Uh, if, if anyone has suggestions, we just create a new record, a new object, and it'll add the records to designate. Um, do you guys have any expectations to see uh, Route 53 uh, uh, features such as failover uh, into the Horizon dashboard? Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, this was a little close to my heart. Uh, Cosmos was supposed to fix that. Um, unfortunately, it never really launched. Uh, it, there's been requests for it. The problem is, are, is if we're, are we doing the monitoring? At which point, we're not a monitoring system. Uh, or is something like Solometer or any of those doing the monitoring and calling our, a switch over API. Um, we're open to suggestions for it. Um, there, there is a blueprint open, I think, uh, been, with the, for, a while. for a while, but we haven't come across a solution that we agree on yet. For which? Oh, yeah, so private pools was the, sorry, the question was, uh, is, there any, is there any plans to support private DNS, uh, like the v, uh, VPC, DNS, and AWS? It's on the roadmap, definitely. I, I'm going to a design summer session after this about how we create service VMs in OpenStack, but it's on the long roadmap. It's a big feature. There is also the existing Neutron work, which was done to integrate with Designate. So Neutron has two sides to their, their DNS integration. The first one is internal DNS, where any machine you boot will be given whatever the name you've given it. Your subnet will have a, a suffix on it. The two will be combined, and your fixed IP will then be resolvable across all of your machines. So if you're just talking about the instance names themselves, and not arbitrary extra records, then Neutron has built that in as part of the Designate integration, but that doesn't actually get pushed to Designate. They handle that through the, the DNS mask instance that's run for each network. That's another problem, actually. Yeah. It's too static. Yeah. Okay. 
Any other questions? So the question is, do, uh, do we support uh, different IP addresses for different records or different views in the DNS, like Split Horizon? Um, with, D with pools, yes, we, you can do. Uh, you can have multiple uh, records for the same, multiple data for the same record in different pools. But you've got to create the zone in each pool and manually do the replication across all the pools right now. Uh, again, that was something on the roadmap in the future, but again, it's a, it's a harder problem than automating that. Yeah, the, the biggest problem we've found with trying to get things like GeoIP, um, automatic failover, and these kind of more advanced things is, well, we support Bind, PowerDNS, Infobox, Akamai, DIN, Microsoft DNS, NSD, and a few others. And it's incredibly difficult to find even, let's say, GeoIP, None of them actually support it. Like there's, there's, there's virtually no standard DNS server out there that supports it. If you try and use views with bind, ISC will tell you don't do that. Um, you know, it's, it, it's difficult to guess these kind of things right across all of them. So they're definitely the long tail features that we're working towards, but we're, we're not there yet. So stay tuned. Yeah, uh, stay tuned and if you have any ideas about how we can do it, please come tell us because we're all open for ideas. I come back on the automation. Uh, yeah. Do you support the ability to uh, declare new, new DNS entries uh, using uh, using uh, it or uh, from an overall perspective, when you build a new instance, do you automate uh, the DNS creation? With heat, did you say? Did you say with heat? Or when just you build the VM, when you, uh, you start your VM, can yeah. you integrate with it eat oh. a description to build new DNS entries, for instance? Yeah, so with the designate neutron uh, integration, anytime designate Nova neutron integration, you can create a VM. If you attach it to a network with a, a, a domain name associated with it, the name will be combined with the subnet given to neutron on the port. And that port will then say, because it's got, because it's attached to the appropriate network, we'll figure out the full name and send it over to us and designate. So as you boot an instance, that whatever you, whatever net, whatever the network is called, and whatever your instance is called, we combine to give you a, a, a name before it's even booted up. Yeah, but assuming that you have a business service on top, can you declare additional DNS entries to? Oh, automatically, right now, no. Well, with, with heat, you can do it. You can have, there's heat uh, resources for designate, where you could feed the information in to, to generate the multiple records you need. Or just any of the API clients and so on. If, if you're standing up a new service on an instance, nothing in OpenStack really knows that you're doing that. So you have to, you have to push that information out uh, that might be to heat or just directly to designate. Yeah. Can we automatically create a zone with the project name as a project is created? Um, right now. It depends what you're using. You'd have, you, if you could do a designate sync, but you'd have to write your own handler. You'd have to write a plugin for it right now because the event doesn't have the project name. The metadata coming out of Nova, don't, does, it only has the ID, so you'd have to go get the name from Keystone and insert it. But it's a, it, that API, the, the plugin points are relatively simple there. Uh, we. We don't have any naming. We don't, know, we don't have any standards, no, or policy for it, unfortunately. You've had your hand up a while. Is uh, this kind of production ready for a public cloud on Kilo? On Kilo. 
Kilo was a long time ago. <laughs> we ran it in production, and we so ran Kilo in production. We, we did. So yeah. HP, we had our public cloud. Obviously, we, we don't run the public cloud anymore, but we ran designated production there for many, for three or four years um, from its earliest versions. Um, it, yes, it needed some TLC back in those days. It had gotten a lot more stable. Yeah. One of the things about designate is there's really no requirement for you to run like Kilo designate with Kilo rest of OpenStack. We don't have a huge amount of hard-coded integrations with the other services. So our API has been mostly stable. All of the interactions happen over the API. So at the end of the day, if you want to run Newton with your Kilo Cloud, there really shouldn't be any problem doing that, so long as you're putting them on different machines because Python version dependency and you know all that stuff. Yeah, Kilo should be okay. The problem is you're not going to get any more bug fixes. That branch is gone. Hmm? Liberty. Liberty. Is that a, is that a UL? No, UL, no, it won't be yet. No, that'll be UL soon, though. That, that would depend on which distribution are using. Uh, yes, yeah, so, sorry, distributions will potentially maintain different branches a lot longer. Um, I, no, I can't remember what the LTS for uh, Havana was the LTS. It's Havana, Kilo, and Mataka for Ubuntu, I think. Yeah. Um, so they'll get they'll get patches from the Ubuntu uh, internal repositories for a longer period of time. None of those uh, enterprise-grade uh, distros consider designate as production-ready. Although, uh, I mean, uh, Red Hat, for example, they they, they, they say it's a uh, review, a uh, tech review. Uh, they yeah, support uh, it. Uh, HP HP's had it for yeah. the last three well, since the yes. beginning. Yeah. Uh, Helion's had it since exactly. since one zero. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I know there's 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 so many different projects, and I think a lot of the enterprise distros have been taking what is traditionally the integrated release, Nova Neutron Glance Cinder. Yeah. They're adding absolutely critical things like monitoring. So Solometer has kind of come in because it was, it was deemed fairly critical. A lot of the ancillary services that have been around for quite some time and have been stable, but haven't been brought into those, are being brought into those and they're being tagged preview, mostly because they don't those companies haven't, they're not familiar with it. They don't know how to operate this at scale. They don't know how to support customers yeah. running it. And that experience is, is vital in, a, in your distro before you're able to turn around and say, look, this is production ready, go migrate everything to it. And if you want to shout at your enterprise vendor to go provide to developers and to designate, feel free. That's oh, the best way to get experience. I won't experience. recommend that, but, but that's fine. Yeah. Do you, uh, Sorry. So we support uh, pro you providing us things like SPF and DKIM records. We'll host those. Uh, we don't currently do DNS. Uh, yeah. There is nothing preventing you using things like Akamai's signing, uh, ParaDNS is automatic signing, and a bunch of other provide a bunch of other name servers do that kind of thing, and we'll handle it at the front end. We haven't tied that directly into Designate, at least not yet. And it's it, that's on the very long tail because of well, I'm kind of allergic to writing my own crypto code. Uh, and it's, 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 it's significantly difficult to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we, uh, we, we, it wasn't a critical feature for a lot of people. I, so, and nobody was willing to, pump, to put up the devs to do it. Well, directly as in you, you, know, you can provide the, the content of those records to us and we'll happily serve them out. We won't generate things like your DKIM signing keys or, or anything like that. Yeah. Going back to the, the support question, do you know of anybody who supports standalone designate? Um, so if someone is running, say, Red Hat, and they really want designate and Red Hat doesn't support it, is there someone they can go to? Not that I know of at this point. Um, there's, there's very few companies that do that for OpenStack projects. The only one I can think of is Tesora for Trove. Um, yeah. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any other companies that do that. I haven't, definitely haven't seen any for Designate. Okay. Any last question before we get kicked out of the room? I think that's it. Okay. Thank you guys for coming.